So you're thinking about visiting your loved one with dementia. Well, what are some things that you can do to make it a more positive experience for everyone involved? My name is Dr. Miguel Rivera and my friends call me Dr. G. I am a psychiatrist and I work with people with Alzheimer's disease and related dementias. One of the most common questions I've been asked recently is, hey doc, I'm flying into town, I haven't seen my mom or dad in more than a year, and with their dementia, I am not sure what to expect. Do you have any advice about visitations? So before I go on, I have a question for you. What would a positive visit look like for you? Think about it for a moment. When you get back on that airplane or the car to return home, what would make you feel like, gosh, this was such a good visit. I am so glad I did it. Because dementia is a progressive disease. If you haven't seen your loved one in several months, things have most likely changed and not necessarily for the better. From my own experience, my dad and I used to love to play sports, especially golf. In his mid-70s, he developed Lewy body dementia, and his first symptoms were problems with balance and coordination. As the disease progressed, falls became much more of an issue, and he had to stop playing. So instead of playing golf, we would just watch it on TV. And as the disease continued to progress, even this became a challenge. And at the end, I would just sit with him, holding his hand in silence. What was important for me was the connection. Not so much the activity we were doing, but to be in each other's company. The point I'm trying to bring across is that it is important to be flexible with our expectations about our loved ones and how our visit should go. This is why it is so important to speak to the family members who are caring for them or to talk to the facility staff so you can find out ahead of time how they've been doing lately. There are other issues besides memory loss that may come into play, such as personality changes, agitation, depression, psychosis, even changes in their ability to ambulate or to get around. So asking about how they are doing is crucial so that you can plan your visit accordingly. It is important to go with the flow. Well, actually to go with their flow, to plan the visit around what is best for them, rather than trying to fit them around what you want to do. If your loved one is in the earlier stages of Alzheimer's disease, your visits may require less planning and your interactions may be more of what you're used to from them. However, you may notice that they are repeating the same question or statement over and over again, or that they're getting their memories mixed up. For example, one of my younger Alzheimer's patients, um, these repetitive questions were one of her presenting symptoms. If her husband uh, told her that they were going to the grocery store in a few hours, she would start asking every few minutes, hey, when are we going? Is it, is it time to go yet? Uh, when are we leaving? Just nonstop, it, it would drive him bonkers. And, and for sure, these repetitive statements or questions can be very challenging and difficult to deal with. So try to stay positive with a good sense of humor as much as possible and try not to correct them or tell them, hey, you know, you're repeating yourself. Uh, be gently and redirecting them perhaps to different activities like listening to their favorite music, uh, looking at a picture album or going for a walk. In this scenario, it makes sense to have like a store of favorite family memories that you know that they're going to bring laughter or some positive emotions in them. For example, for his 69th birthday, I took my dad to play golf at St. Andrews in Scotland. And this became one of his most treasured memories. So whenever he was anxious or down, I would bring some of the pictures of us playing and say, hey dad, uh, wasn't this a great trip? It never failed to bring a smile to his face or to change his attitude. This is why I always tell my families, just say yes and redirect. This St. Andrew's story also brings up another important point. 
Notice that I didn't ask him, hey dad, do you remember our trip to St. Andrews? Instead, I asked, hey dad, wasn't this a great trip? It is important that we don't make them feel like we're testing their memory or quizzing them. Things that can make them feel frustrated or uneasy or uncomfortable. Sometimes our loved ones with dementia may say hurtful things or, or may be paranoid or disinhibited. And as tough as this may be, just try not to take things personally. Really remember that this is the disease talking. Let me paint another scenario. You arrive in town, excited to see your dad. You just spoke to him on the phone to let him know you are coming. You walk into the room beaming and you say, hi dad, and he looks at you and says, who are you? I remember how my dad looked at me as he whispered to my mom, who is that man? Even being a dementia doctor did not eliminate the shock of that moment. What is important is to keep going with their flow, to go with their story. I had a patient who thought that her son was her husband, and I also advised not to correct her. Remember, I know it's hard for you, but it's even harder for them, and even more confusing. As dementia progresses, adapting to changes in general uh, becomes much more difficult. So predictability and routines can make a big difference. This means that changes in the routine, like a visit from a friend or a family member, can sometimes trigger negative behaviors, more confusion, etc. This is what I always recommend to test the water first by starting with a really short visit, maybe 20 to 30 minutes, and then increase the time as they tolerate it. I would also recommend visiting in the mornings. And the reason for this is that most people with dementia tend to be better in the mornings and worse in the afternoons, something that we call sundowning. So a great thing to do would be to ask ahead of time, what is the best time of the day for my loved one? And then plan your visit around those times. To give an example, the family of one of my patients who lives in a memory unit was interested in having him attend a baby shower for his granddaughter. And they planned to have it in the afternoon between 4 and 5 p.m. Now, I knew that this was when he typically got agitated, around 4 p.m., and he would become much more irritable, agitated, confused, trying to get out the door, demanding to go home. So I suggested to the family that they change the time of the shower to an earlier time to account for his sundowning. So his family agreed to pick him up around 10 o'clock in the morning and then to have him back in the unit around 2 p.m. The baby shower went on without a glitch and they were so happy to have him attend. So the timing was essential to make this visit work. Another important concept is overstimulation. A loud, busy, distracting environment with multiple conversations or loud music can be really overwhelming for someone with dementia. So choose places that are well lit, free from distractions, and where the sound level is comfortable. If you take them somewhere, definitely keep an eye on them. I remember a story of my patient and his family having lunch at a local restaurant. My patient got up to use the restroom, and when he was coming back, he got lost and disoriented, ended up leaving the restaurant without anybody noticing, and the police found him three hours later, kind of wandering at a nearby mall. Another frequent question I get from my families who have a loved one in a memory unit is asking if it's okay to take the person back to their home for a visit. This is always tricky. I've had so many patients who went home for a visit with their family and then decided, I am not going back to the facility. And it was then a big problem trying to bring him back. This is why most facilities have private dining rooms and I tend to encourage families to bring in the food and the drinks and have the party at the facility. What about the grandkids? This is another frequent question I get. Of course, bring in the grandkids. Keeping healthy family ties is important for all of us. 
This may also be a good opportunity to give some age-appropriate information to the kids about what is happening to grandma or grandpa. There is also the possibility that the person with dementia may not recognize the grandkids. So it may be reasonable to let the older children know in advance that this may be a possibility. One of my patients who lives in a memory unit was recently visited by his son, his wife, and their brand new baby. And even though the person with dementia did not understand or could recognize who the baby was, he held her in his arms, smiled, and enjoyed you know, playing you know, with her. And this was a memorable moment for his family. They were all so happy. So to summarize, first, check in with yourself and your expectations. Remain flexible and open. Find out ahead of time how they're doing so that you can plan your visit around them. If possible, start with a short visit in the morning and proceed as they tolerate it. Try to keep the environment free from distractions and quiet. Try not to correct them. Say yes and redirect. And remember, don't take behaviors personally. Remember, it is the disease talking. And you know, Patients with dementia love pets. And of course, it may be a little bit more difficult with a kitty cat, but I had a little Maltese that I would take with me to work every day, and my patients just loved her. I would put her on their bed and just watch them smile. It was like the best part of my day was to see their face light up when I brought my little doggy in. So if you have a pet and you're thinking about bringing him or her with you, then please do it. I think that your family member will definitely thank you for it. I sincerely hope this information is helpful to you and that you have a fulfilling and meaningful visit with your loved one. Check the links below for more useful information. And if you have any questions, please post them in the comments below. And I will see you in the next video.